Hello everyone and welcome into yet another video and quantum physics is actually pretty simple. We all heard it multiple times about superposition, principle of uncertainty and entanglement and we know basically what they are. The, for example, superposition, let's start with that. So we all heard the very famous example of Schrodinger's cut. Right? We take a cut, we take some poison, we put them into a box and we then close the box. Now, is the cat dead or is the cat alive? If the poison has... has, 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 has oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What are you doing here? Someone... What? How did you end up here? This video wasn't clickbait, was it? Oh my, maybe it was. Maybe that's how we bring people... Anyway, quantum physics right here. here. Here's how you actually calculate stuff in quantum physics. We have to start with a particle. So a particle is not like our normal everyday object because it does not have a single position, only it has possibilities of being in different places. In here, the more blue the area is, the higher probability of particle being in that place. And that probability is described by a psi function. And actually, in order to better how this works, let's go down to a single dimension for the sake of simplicity. Now, there is only one more wrinkle because this is a complex function, which means it has a real and an imaginary output. But in order for it to be a valid probability function, we need it to be positive. So we just have to square it and take the absolute value. And whilst I already made a node video about complex numbers, I will eventually make a node video about probability to explain what we can do with this probability distribution because it's actually a lot but for now now this 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 is very important because what we got in the end is the probability density function very important function which basically allows us to get the expected position based on some rules in probability and with no, 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 come on, come on! And there's a possibility that the universe is split, but we don't have to get into that. Next thing is the principle of uncertainty. The principle of uncertainty basically tells you that you cannot be certain of... Okay, okay, we're back, back. I know how much time we have. Velocity. Velocity is not actually just meters per second. It's not that simple. We have to get to the actual definition. So let's imagine an object with some speed or velocity. In this case, the difference doesn't really matter. In order to calculate it, we just have to take the distance and divide it by the time in which it traveled it. But that method leads to some problems, because there's only the average velocity of an object. In order to show velocity of this object at a given instant, we can't actually do it. In an instant, zero seconds passes and an object travels zero meters, so we need a different method. That's where derivatives come in. Let's imagine a rocket in three different times, starting time and then two times some delta seconds after. Now initially the rocket is in the initial position, but then it moves up. Now we can see that we can graphically describe delta x, delta t, but also the velocity based on them. Only one more thing, the velocity in this case is not described by the length, only by the slope. That's rather important, but now we can describe the motion of this rocket with a function. And we can sidestep the divide by zero problem by saying that the instant velocity would not be equal to the average distance divided by the average time, only by saying that it is equal to what this value approaches as delta x and delta t is approaching zero. So instead of dividing zero by zero, we are dividing something very close to zero to something very close to zero. So if we take the derivative or expected position in relation to time, we will get the, the quantum physics version of velocity. And we no, 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 where something is. For example, when you have a particle, you cannot at once know its momentum and its position. It is just impossible. Now the third thing, which is entanglement, basically means that if we have two particles in a superposition, it is possible to entangle them, which basically means that if we take them and we move them apart far, far away, if we measure one of them, the other will respond in a predictable manner, no matter how far away they are. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. It's okay, it's okay. We're almost there. Now all we need to do is solve the derivative. That's it. Should be rather straightforward. So which one is it? Is quantum mechanics this very simple thing which anyone can understand? Or is it this very sophisticated tool for tackling some of the toughest problems out there? Well, what if not both? Because quantum mechanics is tough, and it is not easy to understand, but at the same time, it's not impossible. Just remember that even though these things might seem very hard to understand and very complex, they are not impossible to understand. So, you can learn them too. 
Bye. And ah, fudge! That was a bowl of flambugas. That's dangerous. And even though I would love to finish on this very romantic note, right? I unfortunately have to make it that moment because if you are watching this video, you will probably be very motivated. You will go to watch some courses in quantum physics, and there is a possibility that you'll fail. I I still mean the thing. It's just that you have to learn the things in the right order. And because of that, here's my recommendation for what to do if, as a complete beginner. If you are not a complete beginner, you can skip some of the topics. It's just my recommendation. First of all, I would recommend 3 blue, 1 brown calculus. Because, surprise, surprise, in this video, actually almost nothing about quantum physics was complicated. Only the math behind it. That's why you have to understand the math first. So, Free Blue and Brown Calculus, great series, you will understand calculus if you watch it. Then, after you understand calculus, and only after you understand calculus, Black Pen, Red Pen for some real examples to how, cal how to calculate itself. Then, ChatGPT. I am not kidding. ChatGPT because it's like a personal teacher and you can just ask it whatever you need if something is unclear. That, that's the person, well not person, to ask, to, to actually clear up some stuff. Then, if you understand the math, Brand Carson, and there we go. You can learn quantum physics yourselves. Yeah, it's not as simple as learning some simple mathematical operations, but still, that is genuinely the path. If you do it, you will learn quantum physics. No strings attached, it is a step by step guide how to. So, that's the, good, that's the way. Now, I am telling you this because some of you will get interested and that's for a very good reason. It is an unbelievably interesting field. So go for it. I genuinely mean it because I did mean everything I said in this video. You can learn it. Uh, but I'm kind of overdoing it with this clarifying bit. I just didn't want you to get disappointed that you won't get the, you know, the quantum physics right away. You should first get some additional series in about math and calculus and stuff to clear up everything. But if you do it, you can learn quantum physics too. Because quantum physics is pretty simple. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.